guys so many larger earthquakes off the oregon coast recently we just had another 5.9 today in the early morning hours off the coast of bandon very shallow only six miles deep so what is going on do we need to worry about the cascadia fault do we need to worry about the big one and did it come with a tsunami warning all in this video guys a strong magnitude 5.9 earthquake just hit Oregon and this is where I'm standing right now. Shallow depth, only 6 miles, 142 miles west of the town of Bandon in Oregon. Hey guys, welcome to On the Pulse with Silky on the pulse of the earth a earthquake just happened behind me and we already had two aftershocks magnitude three it was a strong earthquake but it was also a shallow earthquake and you see the tsunami warning sign behind me and guys don't worry i know my escape route i know if there is a tsunami how i can get to higher ground even if this trail this wooden trail here behind me collapses and my two assistants here here. they're here today as well Rudy and Eddie so let's talk about this because this earthquake like the one that we already had we had some other earthquakes in that range early September here in Oregon off the coast of Bandon Oregon and what is this everyone is like whoa the Cascadia Fault, the Cascadia Fault. So is this really the case? Is this the Cascadia Fault? Well, this is an area, we're close to Northern California, where we have basically everything that's bad regarding these fault lines is meeting there. Let me get further down a little bit and then let's talk about this. Northern California, the San Andreas Fault, then we have the Cascadia Fault, that goes from Northern California, basically through along the coast of Oregon, Washington, and then even into Canada, British Columbia. And that could create a magnitude nine mega thrust earthquake, which is not really good guys, I would say. And that would also come with a tsunami that could be, oh sh Eddie that could be as high as 100 feet. So is this the culprit? Do we need to worry about the Cascadia Fault? So let's get down there into that tsunami danger zone. When this earthquake happened early in the morning, basically there was no tsunami warning. That's the good thing. So that's why <laughs> I'm going down here if it's off the coast, then that tsunami would come very, very quickly between 8 to 15 minutes. So that risk is gone. Bandon itself does not sit on a fault line, but off its coast, there's a lot of fault lines meeting, as you can see here. Most likely the culprit is the Blanco fracture zone again, as already in August and September. That fracture zone is not connected to the Cascadia fault. At the Blanco fracture zone, we have two tectonic plates sliding past each other horizontally. The Cascadia fault is a subduction zone, but of course, always the fear that we're facing is that could that constant rattling in that zone trigger the Cascadia Fault. We have seen recently that earthquakes in Russia and Kamchatka have been triggered, um, have triggered volcanic eruptions. So of course, this is not nice. And these stronger earthquakes are signs that stress is building up. Usually the earthquakes are at a maximum magnitude there of 5.5. And you can also see if we click here on the USGS map uh, to the historical earthquakes, then we see there's lots of earthquakes along this fracture zone. So it's nothing specifically to worry about that this is something, oh my God, something huge and bad is coming, but it's definitely something that we should keep an eye on because this area is highly seismically active. It is a transform fault running from the Gorda Ridge to the Juan de Fuca Ridge. It is called a transform fault or strike slip fault. 
because the plates are running past each other. They're sliding along each other and pressure is building up. This fold line is a complex series of basins and ridges and it has a length of roughly 270 miles 350 kilometers what's going on here <laughs> are we hunting something so it is a strike slip fault like the san andreas fault so this is the difference right and the subduction zone the cascadia fault two plates are sliding underneath each other and that can create these dangerous earthquakes and that's unfortunately what we have along the Pacific Ring of Fire. I'm standing along the Pacific Ring of Fire and this area where I am standing along the Cascadia subduction zone, if you look at the earthquakes that are happening around the world along the Pacific Ring of Fire, the only area that is terrifyingly quiet is here on the West Coast along Canada and the US and it's overdue, it's due for the big one. That's why it's always scary if there is an alarm going off, like I think around midnight, shortly after midnight last night, earthquake 5.9. So I had to look, where is it? And like, oh, <laughs> I am not far from that. So great, I am here reporting live for you guys. And as beautiful as the West Coast is, but guys, let's be reminded, we just had the Megathrust earthquake in Kamchatka. Megathrust earthquake, magnitude 8.8. .8. That was sending a tsunami to the west coast, to Crescent City. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you might wonder, I can't let these guys off leash because then they're gone, they're hunting something, and I don't want to risk it. So that's why. And guys, for the ones of you that have dogs, there's a virus on the West Coast here. It's called fresh salmon virus. And if your dogs eat some fresh fish remains or something, it can contain the virus and it can be deadly pretty quickly. So that's why I have them on the leash, keeping them under control. And there is something else off the coast of Oregon. So when I heard magnitude 5.9, I was looking at the location of the earthquake very, very quickly because there is our friend Axel. I've reported about it quite a few times. So the ones that are regular viewers of my channel, you know what that is. An underwater volcano that's about to blow. So of course, that is also something to keep an eye on. And I will also be on the pulse for you if that one <laughs> explodes. And guys, have a look at this map. This is the seismic risk map for Oregon and you see along the coast it's deep red this is because of the Cascadia subduction zone the mega thrust earthquake the Cascadia fault that will rip open the Pacific Northwest everything west of the highway they say west of I-5 will be destroyed the land will the land will sink where I'm standing there's going to be liquefaction the land will sink six feet first after the earthquake and then there's a tsunami within 8 to 15 minutes the tsunami is coming from where I am right now and guys never turn your back to the Pacific Ocean I am doing this because I can see the ocean. I can see it in the camera, but there can be sneaker waves. So be really careful. But this area, to me, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the most beautiful areas in the world. To me, I like the green. I like the rugged landscape. I like the Pacific Ocean. Um, I am not the person that needs to be in a lounge chair where it's super hot with hundreds and thousands of other tourists. I like this, almost alone with nature. But as beautiful as it is, it's also very, very dangerous if the big one hits. Guys, I hope you liked this video. Check out the video about actual sea mount in the end screen and I will give you an update pretty, pretty soon because I have found something that is very, very interesting. And leave it a like, give it a hype, share it with your friends, guys. And if you want to support the channel, buy me a coffee to keep me running here on the beach and find all the dangers for you guys. Link is in the description underneath the video player here. Buymeacoffee.com slash silky. Click the join button to become a 
supporting member for behind the scenes stuff. And thank you for your supers. Thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. We are such a great group of people interested in all that stuff. And now Udi is wrapping the leash around my leg, my leg, which is not so nice. Guys, we will walk along the beach here, having our escape route in mind, I promise you. Uh, see you soon. Click the end screen. Bye-bye. And guys, look at that. Everything's full of clams here. Hundreds, thousands of them. And Rudy smells them. He wants to dig holes and eat them, huh, Rudy? They're in there.